This fall it hit me. I am the 99%. There are no protesters out front, no camp, no drum circles, no one is fighting for my rights. I am oppressed, mistreated, yet I do nothing. <laughs> I suffer from Stockholm Syndrome. <laughs> I sympathize with my oppressor. I'm incapable of leaving the very person holding me captive. <laughs> True, I've plotted my escape. Richard Branson's Caribbean home, pre-fire of course, <laughs> tops the list. But no one can help because they are captives too. This is the upside down world where the 99% and the 1% live together simultaneously in harmony and in chaos. I recognize the others when I'm out during the day. It's the only time of day I'm typically released. <clears throat> I see their bloodshot, tired eyes, and like myself, they're traveling around town with their captors. <laughs> it is rare to see a 99 percenter at night. Our eyes struggle to readjust in the darkness. The working conditions of my oppressor are technically listed as a form of torture under the Geneva Convention. I googled it. <laughs> she operates with the most criminally insane device, the unpredictable, the unknown. Could the day start at 3 a.m., 4 a.m.? I don't know. <laughs> I start to believe that 5 a.m. would be a gift. And it's not just when she wakes up, it's her erratic behavior once she wakes up. But I am not weak, I am not helpless. I know the 99% need to rise above. And in this twisted reality, the 99% are the ones who hold the keys to the front door, the car, the bank account. We know how to work the remote control. We provide the food and the shelter to the one percenters and yet we don't leave. <laughs> Ultimately, the question is simple. Why does a toddler abruptly go from sleeping through the night and waking at 6.30 a.m. to suddenly waking daily at 4.18 or 5.02 and then refusing to go back to sleep? And as anyone knows who has lived through this, an awake three-year-old is an entirely different beast than a sleeping baby who wakes in the middle of the night for one reason, a baby can't march into your room, flip on the overhead lights, <laughs> pull off your covers, and shout, Mommy, wake up! <laughs> if they could, none of us would have them ever. <laughs> and that's the catch. The rules change without warning under these working conditions. I was ambushed. In my house, the upheaval began on a crisp fall day and commenced what turned out to be four consecutive months of torture. Though the question seems simple, why wake so early for no reason? Unfortunately, the answer remains deeply complex. The, mo the motivations of the 1% offer little understanding to us 99 percenters, though it is studied and evaluated in grave detail. <laughs> We racked our sleep-deprived brains. Was it moving her to a big bed? Did she have to pee? Was she hungry? Is it her eczema? Wait, wait, I know. Let's buy a bunny alarm clock that teaches her to stay in bed until the bunny wakes up. Can an inanimate bunny teach this child something that I can't? I will pay anything if it's a magical bunny that can lure a toddler back to sleep. <laughs> and when you are so tired, you start to believe it could happen. <laughs> How about taking away story time until she sleeps longer? How about no songs before bed? Maybe punishment will work because she loves those things. And punishment can feel so good. <laughs> because it gives a false feeling of power to the powerless. <laughs> but wait, don't the experts say to reward good behavior? Confusion is part of the torture. 
So how about promising her candy if she stays in her room until the bunny wakes up? Will sugar only incentivize the already cruel tactics of this small dictator? <laughs> Do we negotiate with terrorists? <laughs> Doubt is part of the torture. The truth is the 99% will negotiate and bribe with total disregard for future repercussions if it means sleeping until the sun comes up. Recall, we believe in the possible power of a bunny alarm clock. <laughs> you can drive yourself insane trying to troubleshoot and problem solve with a child who has the attention span of a gnat and the uh, <clears throat> ability to ignore your direct questions more skillfully than Newt Gingrich. <laughs> Except these kids don't lie, they just don't offer you any hint or help. And then one day for me, it just ended. After four months of mind-numbing exhaustion, she began sleeping until 6 a.m. again, back to racking my brain for answers that will never come. Was it getting a bedtime snack? Was it going potty at 11 p.m.? We will never know. I am left only with the emotional scars and the fear of this. Will it start again? <laughs> Without warning or explanation. In the end, the bunny clock remains useless. I offer you this tale as a warning and with sympathy in case you too suffer from Stockholm Syndrome. We are the 99% and so far Occupy Parents is kicking my ass.